Confession, I hate sleeping. But the more I prioritize it, the more everything else in my life improves. My physical health, my mental health, my relationships, because I'm not being a moody b to my loved ones. My creativity, my work, everything improves. Truly, if there's one thing that solves all our problems, it's sleep. But as someone who would much rather stay up till 2 a.m. dancing, here's the routine that actually gets me to unwind, forget about my problems, and crave, yes, crave, actually crawling into bed and falling asleep. My night routine and the five sleep hacks that five times my life. First step to the night routine is dinner. For me personally, I love a heavy carb dinner because I usually work out in the morning. That way my glycogen stores are fuller. Plus the heavy carbs just makes me really sleepy. I know that's not gonna be for everyone, but that works for me. Tonight, I was craving the vodka pasta and Parmesan Brussels sprouts from Dovetail. 10 out of 10 recommend if you're in Vancouver. I've been a finance budgeting queen the last few weeks, cooking my own meals, and I'm proud of myself. So I decided to indulge in a little DoorDash this evening and get Dovetail ordered in, plus added a side of chicken breast for them protein. Step number one, setting the vibe. First lights, no hard overhead lighting. I wish I had installed all those fancy ones you see with the different colors and mood. I don't have that in my apartment. I just try to use dim lower lights. For example, only the back lights in my kitchen. I have this Ikea lamp. I only use the lower setting that shoots down, not the higher up one. In my bathroom, I only use a shower light versus both overhead bathroom lights. See how it's just everything a little dimmer. Especially great for my renters who don't want to install lightning into their apartment. Next for setting the vibe is music. I put on my relaxing nighttime routine playlist or I put on a podcast that's just kind of boring that I don't really have to pay attention to. Sadly, personally, I have to avoid all high intensity upbeat music uh, because it gets me way too rallied up and then I'm excited and I want to go out dancing and I'm calling my friends 11 p.m. on a Tuesday to hit up the club, even though we've washed off all our makeup and have done our seven step skincare routine. Note, my Focus Flow YouTube stream, which I'll link down below, is perfect for nighttime unwinding and just kind of getting in the zone of being present in the moment. Hack slash step number two, the technology tricks I have. I'm sorry, yes, I could just like not watch TV or not stare on my phone, but guess what? I do, and I want to, because I love sitting and watching a movie. I love sitting and watching one of my favorite shows at night, and I love contacting my friends. I have a long distance relationship and friendship and family, so guess what? I do wanna see what they're up to on Instagram and respond to their texts at night. Number one, focus mode. I have my phone set up, so the entire thing changes over to what I call boring mode. There's just nothing I can endlessly scroll. I'll link the short of how to do this. It's just like all there is is weather, messages, some notepads, everything else disappears. And I'm like, well, there's nothing to scroll, but I can respond to my friends and then that's it. <laughs> and then I'm bored and just wanna to go to bed. Two, I do turn my phone completely red. This is crazy, I know. But once you do it, you're like, oh, I didn't realize how bright my phone is. I do have shorts for this as well, which I will link. It just like takes away all the blue light. It's not perfect. Red light is fine to look at at night. Typically it doesn't change your circadian rhythm. That's because we evolved from looking at firelight. That's the color. The sun, the sun setting is more of a warmer tone. We're just trying to avoid the blue light that mimics the early sunrise that keeps us awake. So that's why I turned my friend my phone red. And also it just becomes a lot less appealing to do online shopping. So once again, it makes me bored and want to go to sleep. Number three, supplements. It's less of what I take and more so what I don't take. For example, I only take AG1 in the morning personally because I'd found there's some things like B12 that I don't want to be taking at night. And of course I avoid caffeine after 5 PM, which breaks my heart, but it does help with sleep. The one thing I do try to take at night is magnesium. There's a lot of different forms. Example, magnesium chloride and mitrate, mitrate, did I say that right? Which I would take more during the day. And then there's other ones like theronate and oxide, which take at night, which are a bit more calming. And according to Peter Atia and a lot of other health professionals, a lot of us are very deficient in magnesium, which is such an important nutrient. You can get it from sources such as avocado, bananas, nuts. Unfortunately, I'm allergic to avocados and sometimes bananas. Um, so I do try to supplement magnesium specifically because I just don't really have a magnesium rich diet, unfortunately, due to allergies. So I'll take the magnesium at night to unwind. Also, magnesium is an electrolyte and the electrolyte I do take does have magnesium, 60 milligrams to be specific, and that is Element, which is 
the sponsor of today's video. I am so obsessed with. I love Element specifically because it's science-based ratios of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. I used to suffer from so much cramps. In the middle of the night, I would wake up with these debilitating calf cramps and wake up like I did a 1,000 calf raises. And there's nothing worse for your sleep than suddenly being woken up in the middle of the night for no reason. And as soon as I started getting in enough sodium and other electrolytes, that went away completely. That has not happened since I started it. And I do blame this like anti-salt, it's gonna make you bloat. And then I started consistently using electrolytes and it does not make me retain water. That's a whole nother topic in itself, but just being consistent with my electrolytes, it gives me more energy. It avoids that crash in the middle of the day. I have more sustained energy during my workouts. I have less cramps. I have less headaches, especially if you go out drinking the next day. If I make sure to have an extra pack of an element before bed, that headache the next day, almost never there. Unless there gets to be a point to no return with drinking. But back to element. I got a code for you guys. If you want to try Element, go to drinkelements.com slash Kelty. And with your purchase, you'll get one of their sample packs, which is a great way to try all eight flavors or share with a salty friend. That's drinkelementy.com slash Kelty to get that deal. Thank you, Element, for sponsoring this video. And I, I'm just so obsessed. With supplements, I avoid melatonin. The only time I'll use that is to help get me established to the next time zone I'm gonna be in when I'm traveling, and I just only use it for that. Do you guys want a video of how I get over jet lag? Because I do it, have it down to a system. I can travel to Europe and get over jet lag in 24 hours. Anyways, comment down below if you guys want that video. Hack number four, temperature. Regulating temperature is so important for making me excited to crawl into bed and also get the best quality of sleep. First, I have a shower before bed or when I do a sauna and then shower, it does definitely, I see it on my aura ring and my eight sleep mattress. I definitely do see how much it improves the quality of my sleep, but most days I'm just too lazy. So I will just have a shower before bed and the warming up your body forces your body to cool down and just that naturally getting your body to cool down internally helps signal to your body to go to sleep. So that is why I do like to shower before night. And also I like the idea of like being clean when I crawl into my bed. Oh. Then I try and make my room cold, either turning down the temperature or opening the window, depending on the time of year. And I do have an eight sleep mattress, which is definitely a luxury. And I've spent quite a bit of my disposable income the last few years is just investing in my sleep between my mattress, the pod cover, quality sheets. The reason it is so expensive is it has the autopilot, so it regulates temperature throughout the night to keep you asleep. But if you're like, Kelty, I just want that warm bed. There is heated blankets. You can get that on Amazon. And there is a good way just to mimic that, just knowing your bed's cozy crawling in for a fraction of the price. But if you got the money for the sleep, oh my God, I, I hate how much I love it. Like, who are you? Stop it. Think about yourself. And last moment about uh, temperature, I have noticed the months I've done cold plunge, cryo, cold showers, I'm just really consistent with cold exposure. I significantly see my HRV improve and my sleep quality, like I get more REM and deep, but I'm lazy about it. And guess what? I'm not one of those biohacking dudes that can like grind it out and do cold exposure every morning at 6 a.m. I can't do it. Occasionally I could suck it up for a month and then as soon as that month is over, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I did it for a month. I get a break. <laughs> Number five, my bed setup slash the double duvet Scandinavian method. As I mentioned before, for me, the biggest thing was making my bed so craveable that I wanna get into it. I sink into a couch with a Netflix show, binge, you got a fuzzy blanket. I don't wanna leave, I'm peak comfort. And even though I know my bed's comfy, I still gotta get up and walk to the bathroom. But if I make my bed so unbelievably comfortable, I know I'm crawling into something comfier, I know I can get into bed at a reasonable time. So I have my Brooklyn and sheets, which I've had for four years. I love them. The temperature from the eight sleep slash you get a heated blanket. And also I've trained myself though to only go into my bed when either it's for sex or sleep. Just being transparent, it has almost tricked my brain. As soon as I go into bed, there's nothing else to do but fall asleep. It's about making my bed so craveable, so enjoyable that I wanna get in and that the only option 
is to sleep or wow, chicka, wow, wow. Those are the only things that end up happening. It's like I trick my brain. I used to have heavy anxiety when I crawled into bed, thoughts started racing. Whenever that happens, I, this is really weird, but it works. I set an alarm. The title of the alarm is whatever thought I can't get over. And I just set it for the morning. And I'm like, see, morning Kelty will deal with that. There's something about just like packaging and letting go and knowing you'll be reminded of it, that you can deal with it tomorrow. And that just helps me not have spiraling thoughts at night which leads me to the double duvet. In Sweden, for couples that sleep together, they don't share a duvet, they have two smaller duvets. Now I'm in Sweden with my boyfriend, this is what we do and this is what Allah do, and it is such a game changer. You still get to sleep with your partner, you still get it cuddled up. But when I burrito myself, I'm not stealing the blanket from my partner. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that is a game changer. Why is that normalized? Why Why do we have to share duvets? Good for you. I like to burrito. And that's not fair to makes because I steal the blanket and then he's a good person and doesn't complain too much, but he builds resentment, I'm sure. But not because we just have two duvets. And step number six, we talked about all the good things. Now it's also just simply avoiding the bad ones. Example, alcohol is bad for your sleep. Staying out too late, you wanna consistently go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time, avoiding caffeine at night, and bright lights at night. And I find those, you know, are kind of the four kryptonites among some other things that really affect your quality of sleep. But I got into this bad habit. I was, I was a bartender, I was a party goer. I would stay out late and drink and have crappy quality of sleep, crappy mental health, and suffered for many years. And then I got into fitness and getting a sleep routine. But then it started being toxic also because I started being like, I have to be in bed at 10 p.m. every day and wake up at 6 a.m. every day and have to be consistent. And when I'm jet lagged, oh my God, I didn't sleep and this is gonna ruin everything. And I would start spiraling if I couldn't stay to it. And I flipped the switch a few months ago and realized it's okay. It's okay if you have a night of bad sleep. I think us in the fitness community have to be better at realizing we are so dialed in to our night routine. If you're watching this, you're a productivity guy or gal. You like to optimize your health and wellness. And I appreciate that about you, but you need to give yourself some slack. Be good at it as much as you can. Fill that cup up. And you fill that cup up so much that the nights you stay out partying till 2 a.m. with your friends, you add extra. You empty a little bit of that cup and you know what? It will refill it over the next few days. I'm not saying don't care about your sleep. Don't care about these things. I just mean when you're consistently doing it, it's okay the days you don't because you know your cup is full. You got plenty, it's pouring over. It gets to be a problem when you're constantly doing that so you're trying to pour from an empty cup and there's nothing to pour from. That's how I've really tried to view my sleep lately because I used to get really bad anxiety about traveling because I knew I would have a crappy sleep even though I do everything possible. I was like, oh, it's so bad for me. I'm like, girl, you're dialed in every other night. Even with my friends, I'm going to Vegas, yeah. Not sleeping, but that's okay because I'm dialed in this week and I'll be dialed in the week after and our bodies are pretty adaptive. So those are the tips and tricks I use to just improve my quality of sleep, get me excited to have a night routine, be consistent with it, enjoy it, and you don't have to get overwhelmed. Just be mindful of your temperature, avoid supplements that could disrupt your sleep, find little ways that you can enjoy social media but not have a doom cycle that you ruined your sleep and so you're grouchy the next day and make your room craveable. Everyone's budget's different. I have seen a lot of benefit from investing in my sleep over other things. Uh, for example, I don't have a car, but that might not be feasible for you. But it's really about those small little things that make your bed comfortable, rejuvenating, and just a spot of sleep and recovery and bounce chicken, wow, wow. Let me know down in the comments any tips or tricks you guys have added to your night routine, the things you've seen most beneficial, and request any other routines you guys would like to see from me. I, I kind of stepped away from them a little bit and I got a little too crazy with some of my creative ideas and I love my 30 day challenges, but I love when I can just kind of scale it back and just go with a routine video for you guys. So comment down below and have a great day. Go pet a dog. Love you guys, bye. And remember, if you're going out this weekend and you've been sleeping well, it's okay. You're cup's full. But if your cup is empty, maybe say no and go get some sleep. Have a great day. Go pet a dog. Love you guys. Bye.